Good morning from Istanbul and welcome to Real Turkey channel, a YouTube video channel that broadcasts from Turkey to explain the facts about Turkish politics and economy. I'm your presenter Atilla Yeşilada and today we're going to talk about prospects of early elections. On Wednesday, Turkey's main opposition parties, center-left CHP and center-right EIP leaders, have conducted a joint press conference where they urged the government to call immediate elections on account of an economic disaster in progress, as well as the potentiality for social unrest. On the other hand, meeting at about the same time, Turkey's governing alliance of Mr. Erdogan and Mr. Bahçeli respectively of AKP and MHP parties, once again expressed their determination to wait until June 2023 when the regularly scheduled elections will take place. Both uh, AKP and MHP have sufficient uh, deputies seats in the Grand Assembly to prevent any effort to call early elections and Erdogan is the president who has the authority to call for to dissolve the parliament and head for early election but he's saying he's not going to do so so why do i think there will be early elections i will explain the reasons in this video i will explain how despite mr erdogan's current resistance and his ally mr bachili also not wanting early elections these may still happen. At this point, obviously, I'm not concerned about which side will win. Though, just to complete the exposition here, all the polls indicate that Erdogan will lose the presidential elections to the joint opposition candidate, most probably Mr. Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu of main opposition CHP, while a six-party alliance of opposition parties, ex-pro-Kurdish rights party, HTP, will sweep the parliament. They will have a simple majority, probably, but if Erdogan waits until 2023, he may not get any seats in the parliament. Um, just a second, just a second, it's early in the war morning. Why do I think that Erdogan will change his mind to call snap elections? Well, let's look at the reasons here. First of all, there are strong signs that Erdogan is becoming frail by the day. There are even suggestions that he has signs of early dementia. I don't want to comment on the health of a politician. It's very unethical. And also, it leads me to the point where I switch to the dark side. However, anyone who watches any video of Mr. Erdogan would agree with me that he has difficulty standing up and walking. So let's say he's just getting old. And as the case in every democratic countries, election campaigns are extremely strenuous on the physique of a politician. In Turkey, these campaigns last about 60 days, sometimes 90 days, during which uh, each leader whistle stops the country, sometimes visiting as many as three, four provinces a day and holding impromptu rallies everywhere where crowds gather. Mr. Erdogan's capacity to be able to lead such an election campaign would probably be strongly jeopardized in 2023. So he may uh, agree by his own health conditions or he may be persuaded to agree by his party uh, to use all of his remaining energy and stamina to lead an energetic election campaign by early next year. There are also some signs that the government, without making an official statement, is preparing for early elections. A fiscal stimulus package called the breathing room is being rolled out, uh, which will contain massive increases to statutory minimum wages, to the pensions, and to the salaries of 
certain uh, classes of civil servants. Moreover, if you are following Turkey at all, you will realize that Turkish lira is heading for Hades for help because Turkey's central bank continues to cut interest rates. For Mr. Erdogan, Lira's depreciation is not important. In fact, it is to some extent desirable because he thinks that if Turkey's current account deficits can be closed and the country can generate a trade surplus, the incoming flows of foreign currencies will reduce inflation. On the other hand, uh, you know, lower interest rates obviously stimulate the housing slash construction sector as well as allowing companies and citizens to borrow cheaply to spend or to invest in fixed equipment. So, you know, these are not uh, definitive signs of early elections, but they are highly suggestive, suggestive that at least among his many options, Erdogan does wish to keep that of snap elections open. <coughs> there is another problem here. Uh, Turkish Turkish poverty is rising at an unprecedented rate. Let me show you a Turkish chart. This is I, look. I am sorry. Uh, you may call me lazy, but it's really difficult to find English language material on Turkish politics, much less on Turkish economy. And it would take me hours and a much bigger staff than the uh, income of this channel can afford to translate them into English. This chart is from Yon Eylem Research Company, conducted at the end of the October. It asks the question to the participants, what is Turkey's most immediate problem as far as you are concerned? 59% say economic crisis, 16.5% says high cost of living or inflation, another 15% say unemployment. So all three items combined, 60, almost 90% of participants in this poll are extremely unhappy with the economy. I can cite several other polls, let me see if uh, I have another one here. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, but this magnitude or level of poverty has triggered, triggered massive social unrest in other countries. Latin America comes to mind, Cuba, Russia for a while, Belarus. Obviously, there were political reasons as well. But as a rule of thumb, when people have enough food on their table and can afford their heating bills and for their children's education, they are less likely to march on the streets for whatever reason. In Turkey so far, street protests have been very limited. But you have to remember, because of climate change, at least in the western parts where a majority of the population resides, winter hasn't started in earnest. We live in a country where, according to other polls, 58% of participants claim they don't have enough income to buy or to pay for their heating needs. In Turkey, people use coal and wood stoves as well as natural gas, but it doesn't make a difference. Um, at least half the population can't even afford those. In another poll, 48% said they are make they are having immense difficulty in meeting their bills for food, rent, etc., etc. Another 50% report that there is at least one unemployed person in their household. So this is unprecedented levels of poverty, and if the government can't improve the conditions over the winter months, then uh, we may be very mindful of social protests or, you know, even a silent protest of AKP voters rapidly leaving the party. And finally, and this is important if someone can persuade Mr. Erdogan, even with 
the fiscal stimulus waiting until mid-2023 is very unlikely to improve Mr. Erdogan's chances of being re-elected. I'm going to do more videos on that. In fact, I have done <coughs> a video on Turkey's unique inflation problem, but currency I'm really sorry, currency depreciation and Double-digit inflation progressing together simultaneously creates a spiral. As the currency depreciates, the Turkish lira price of imported goods become more expensive, which is reflected to the CPI. And as inflation rises, people seek safe havens such as dollar or gold, and they may take their deposits out of the banking system, which would freeze credit flow. And I'm sure, you know, that there is a great debate about when, led by Fed, major central banks will start rate increases. Even though Fed says it's totally talk about that, the futures markets are currently pricing two times 25 basis point uh, rate increases for the United States and at least two dozen uh, developing nations uh, to which Turkey belongs have already started interest rate increases. And of course, as Turkey continues cutting rates while the entire world is tightening monetary policy, it stands to reason that Turkish lira will depreciate further and imported goods will e even become more expensive, uh, triggering an escalating uh, pace of inflation. And as you may have followed from the American debate, even though the economy is doing well, high inflation is undermining Biden's popularity ratings. It's the same in Turkey. Finally, according to official data, Turkey will have registered 10% real income growth in 2021. For 2022, the near consensus prediction for GDP growth is only 3.5%. So you have a massive slowdown in the economy, uh, coupled with soaring inflation by the end of 2022. And these are the kind of conditions which will certainly not help any government to, to win re-elections. <coughs> so let's address the final question here. As I've said, Erdogan can, can call early elections. He says he doesn't want to. The parliament may abolish itself and trigger early elections, but AKP and his nationalist uh, uh, ally, uh, MHP, where Mr. Bakci is the chairman, claim that they have no interest in voting for such a proposal. So how or why do I think uh, that Turkey will slip or slide towards early elections? Here are my reasons. For one thing, if Erdogan's health is failing and he refuses to admit that, he may be forced by his own party, by his deputies, front benchers, to call early elections. Also, there is a phenomenon called deep state. This is sort of like the security bureaucracy, the high judiciary, uh, the national intelligence agencies, etc. If they think Mr. Erdogan is incompetent, to hold office and he refuses to leave, they may persuade him to call snap elections for an orderly transition from the Erdogan era to the next AKP leader or if they win in the polls to the opposition. Uh, we need to focus on MH leader, MHP leader Bacili, who is currently the longest serving active major politician in Turkey. He has in the past several times pulled out of the coalitions his party was part of when he realized that either the coalition is not serving Turkey's best interests, in his own view, of course, or that staying in the coalition would jeopardize his party's chance of being re-elected. And I think Mr. Bacili is coming to that point, judging from the ever-contentious arguments between AKP and MHP. I think he is looking for an excuse to end his alliance with Mr. Erdogan, because Mr. Erdogan has become toxic, not only to his own party, but to MHP as well. Another scenario mentioned uh, in Ankara is that AKP members 
of the parliament are extremely unhappy with Erdogan's haphazard governing style as well as with the alliance uh, with nationalist MHP. As you know, AKP is largely conservative Islamists, but they are not nationalists. So, if push comes to shove, if these deputies, we call them deputies, you have you call them congressmen, congresswomen, if these deputies realize that Mr. Erdogan is a dead end, or he's not going to help them win re-election, they could switch the opposition camp. We have to recall that there are two opposition parties which are spin-offs from AKP, namely Mr. Ali Babacan's Deva and Mr. Ahmet Davutoglu's uh, Gelecek or Future Parties. To recall, Mr. Ali Babacan was a very successful economy minister while Mr. Davutoglu briefly served as prime minister. Um, or another means by which early elections will be triggered is Mr. Erdogan becoming pragmatic or becoming open to counsel from his advisors and lieutenants who will tell him what I just told, told you, that, look, uh, waiting till June 2023 is not going to improve our chances of winning re-elections. So instead of that, let's roll out the pork barrel, spend as much as we can, and there there is ample cash reserves of the Treasury, uh, create this fleeting or temporary feel-good factor in the nation, and then call snap elections and campaign on grounds that, see, if you give me a chance, I can improve the economy. That's a doable strategy. I doubt it will suffice for Erdogan and his AKP MHP alliance to win elections, but at least it will give them a fighting chance, a, a, you know, a, cha a fighting chance in the polls. Uh, these are my arguments. Let me restate, let me state again that I don't like to do political speculation, but uh, for anyone who follows Turkey's political agenda, uh, he or she will agree with me that early elections are the number one topic. And there is a strong suggestion from both AKP and MHP that some preparations are being made for early elections. Thus, I decided to inform you. When do I think early elections will take place? My scenario is they will not be later than April or May of 2022. Though, to be perfectly honest, uh, political analysts who are not close to AKP, impartial, we can call them, or pro-opposition, think that uh, a more likely date for early elections is October 2022. Either way, within a year or so, Turkey will head for the ballot box and more likely than not, the opposition alliance will win. I want to thank you for watching another broadcast of Real Turkey Channel. Although our traffic is small, your comments are always encouraging to me and I think we are building a loyal fan base here. This is an investment into the future, but if you like it, share it with your friends and ask them to subscribe. We try to provide accurate information on Turkish economy and politics. This is Atilla Eşil'a saying goodbye from Istanbul.